اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى اهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وال محمد respected brothers sisters my dear viewers assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh welcome to the contemporary khutbah Alhamdulillah, today also we have another interesting discussion and this discussion is about something which is so personal. Personal to the level that whenever you miss that touch, personal touch, you feel that something is missing within your life. What are we talking about and what are we going to talk about today? Of course, it's something which benefits you as well as me and the whole community. So welcome, dear brothers and sisters, in our today's discussion, which is about al-munajat. When we talk about munajat in Arabic language, we find that there are words which are closer to one another. And sometimes if we are not careful, we may use one thinking that we are using another one. What I mean by this is, the issue of supplicating. When we talk about supplications, there are many ways how to supplicate, how to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when I talk about supplications, I mean when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do something for us or to stop something to happen in our lives. There are many ways of supplications. But however, the one which we are talking today is known as munajat, which comes from unaji. When you do munajat, means you talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I said in the beginning, this discussion is very special because munajat is a special way which you use it to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Most of the time is when you are alone. Most of the time is when you want to whisper. And that's the word, munajat. You whisper to who? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Question. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears. He is a samir, the all hearing. Whatever we say, whether it is loudly or silently, or even if we don't say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةَ الْأَعْيُنْ وَمَا تُخْفِ السُّدُورِ Allah knows the tricks of the eyes and that which is concealed with our hearts. Allah is aware of that. But then why do we need to do munajat? Why do we need to whisper when we talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There is a reason there and we are going to talk about this. One of the reasons when we talk about munajat, normally munajat, as we have seen from our imma al-Athar alayhi musalam, beginning of course with the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, they will do the munajat in the middle of night. When people are sleeping, when there is silence, no one hears what you say except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is through munajat they come closer. Of course, Rasulullah, his level was so high. Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salam and his children, Aimmatul Athar, and the mother, Fatimatul Zahra of the Aimma, of course, their level was so different compared to us. When we talk about munajat, it is for you and me. When we sit down to communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we communicate to tell him what we want. We whisper to him. We don't want anyone else around us to hear what we are talking with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is munajat. But when we do munajat, we need at the same time to think, what am I doing? I'm asking Allah. I'm whispering to him. What will be the answer from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's very important. 
However, when we look at the munajat, it's not like just dua, oh Allah give me, oh Allah bestow upon me, and ameen, 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 and then that's it, oh Allah keep this away from me, and so on and so forth. No, munajat you explain. First of all, that you know who are you whispering to. You mention his merits. And then you come to mention about the understanding of your position. And then you talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do we need to talk to him? There are many reasons. One of the reasons is that we show that humility. We show humbleness. Anyone who wants to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs to show humility. That you are talking to the one who has created the whole universe. He created what you and me know and he created what you and me don't know. He created many worlds. Not only this world which we are living in. He is Rabbul Alameen. Remember when we recite Surah Al-Fatiha. Say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah, all praise, Rabbil Alameen. Lillahi belongs to Allah, Rabbil Alameen, who is Lord of the worlds. So there are many worlds outside there. The world which we are living in, in terms of planets, and there are many worlds of animals and the things which we even don't know. When we do munajat, we communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala silently, it is because we understand he has the power to do, to change, to give, to stop, whatever we want. And when we do munajat, as I said in the beginning, if we choose the time to be in the middle of night, then there is a lot of benefits there. Why? Number one. Because at that time, you don't think about going to work. You don't think about eating. You don't think about drinking. You don't think about any issue which will make you to rush. You are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the way the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do. Every night, he would walk, wake up at night alone to, in order for him to communicate with the alone Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the Holy Prophet used to do this. Why? Because he wants to make you remember that whenever there are difficulties, there are issues, or just you want to praise Allah, you want to appreciate him, you need to be with him alone in order for you to express your feelings towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For Amirul Mu'mineen Ali bin Abi Talib, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi, do you know what he used to do? especially when he was in the city of Kufa, in Iraq, we come to know that Imam Amirul Mu'minin had a special moment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his munajat. What did he used to do? He would wake up at night. He would walk from his house to go to the masjid, which is known as Masjid Kufa. And there he would stand alone in one particular corner. Maybe there were other people busy with ibadah, and this was before Salatul Fajr, and Imam Amirul Mu'mineen used to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In his special munajat, which is known as Mawlaya, Ya Mawlai, Anta al-Mawla wa ana al-Rabb, or Anta al-Mawla wa ana al-Abd. Mawlaya, Ya Mawlai, Anta al-Mawla wa ana al-Abd. Imam Amirul Mu'mineen used to make it very clear from the beginning. Mawlaya, ya Mawlaya, oh my Lord, oh my Lord, anta al-Mawla, you are the Lord, wa ana and I, Ali bin Abi Talib, al-Abd, I am the servant of yours. And then he would ask a question to make it very clear of what he was doing. He would say, that and where can a, a servant like me find mercy except from that who is Lord and that is you. And he will continue with his munajat until near Fajr time. Then he would go to join 
the other people in the masjid in order for him after Salatul Layl or before Salatul Layl, he will be there until Salatul Fajr. When we do munajat, we come to learn that our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be very strong. And here, I would like to take this opportunity to share with you, dear brothers and sisters, the experiences of munajat. Remember, I said in the beginning, this is part of dua. But it's not the dua which we do, for example, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhaban nar and we say ameen, ameen, ameen. No, this is when we talk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way all other messengers used to do, talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I have seen, I have heard from ulama, from the students of knowledge, and even from normal individuals, they said, we didn't know that if you use the way of munajat, it has got more benefits than the way of dua. Oh, here I mean dua is so special, but what I mean here is that if we are in haste of asking, asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in our mind we have that idea that we will get and receive and receive. But the munajat is the other way around. Whether you receive or you don't receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are ready to communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is this communication between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which will build us to become different people. Imagine you wake up at night. In your house, even if you don't go to masjid, you are in your house and you wake up, you perform your wudu. Either you take shower and wudu, uh, or you take just wudu, you sit down, and then you communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether there is need or there is no need. And especially when you, you just express your feelings towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The way we have heard from other people that the experience was so special, it will be special to you too. But there is one imam who used to do his munajat. His munajat was so special. Do you know which imam is this? Of course, this is Imam Ali ibn al Hussein Sajjad, Zain al Abidin alayhi salam. He is Zain al Abidin. He was the ornament of all the people who do worship. The ornament of those who worship Allah, Sajjad, he used to do a lot of sijda. The fourth Imam alayhi salam in his book which has been compiled by people, which is known as Sahifa as sajjadiyya or Sahifa as sajjadiyya Al-Kamila. Imam alayhi salam would do his munajat, and there are many munajat in that particular book. I recommend to you, dear brothers and sisters, to read this particular book. There are many types of munajat. For example, when we take today in Sahifa as sajjadiyya we come to learn one munajat which Imam Sajjad alayhi salam used to do, and this is known as Munajatul Muhibbin. What a name. Munajat al Muhibbin. What does this munajat say? Munajatul Muhibbin is the whispering of the lovers. Here we see Imam Sajjad alayhi salam expresses his love towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. You look even at the title, then you come to know that this particular imam was so special in terms of his wordings. That sometimes we worship Allah the way the hadith says from Aima al athar alayhi salam, including Imam Ali alayhi salam, he says, there are people who worship Allah because they have idea that they will get something from Allah. This is ibadah of businessmen, the way the terminology goes. Why? Because it's a give and take. I'll give you in order for me to take something. This is the way business people do. He says when you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order for you to get something, it's fine. But can you elevate yourself more? And then they say, of course, there is another group of people who worship Allah because of fear. If I don't worship him, he will punish me. 
He says this kind of ibadah is ibadah of slaves. People who are slaves, they do whatever they do for fear. If I don't do it, I'll get be punished. This way of ibadah is not the best ibadah. The best ibadah is where you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not because you do business with him, not because you fear him, it is because he deserves to be worshipped. And Imam Sajjad alayhi salam will bring these topics in his munajat. For example, this one which is known as munajat al-muhibbin, the whispers of the lovers. See in the beginning what Imam alayhi salam says, and this you can find it in as sahifa Sajjadiya or as sahifa Sajjadiya al-Kamila. Imam alayhi salam says, Ilahi, Ilahi, man dhalladhi dhaqa halawata mahabbatik, farama minka badala, Allahu Akbar. Imam alayhi salam says, O oh my Lord, Ilahi, Man dhalladhi dhaqa halawata mahabbatik, who is there, who has tested the love, the love, dhaqa halawata mahabbatik, the love of your, the, the test of your mahabba. Who is there who has tested the test of your love, farama minka badala, and then he decided to leave you, and go for someone else. See the way Imam alayhi salam says, who is there who has tested the sweetness of your ibadah and then decided to leave you to go for someone else? See, as I said in the beginning, this is the way of munajat. It's not just dua asking Allah to give you, to, to protect you from something. Imam alayhi salam says, Ilahi man dhalladhi dhaqa halawata mahabbatik farama minka badala. And then he says, Wa man dhalladhi anisa bi qurbik fabtaga anka hiwala. And can you tell me who is there who found peace, tranquility, and safety closer to you, ya Allah? And then he decided to go and to find shelter, peace, and tranquility for someone else. You will never find that. This munajatul muhibbin shows love that whenever you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will not be able to love someone else. And whenever you come to know realization, that realization is very important. You become to realize the existence of Allah and the inaya, the ihtimam, the care and tender you get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will not go for someone else. Imam alayhi salam, it is here he says, Ilahi, faj'alna mimman, stof, mimman istafaitahu likurbika wa wilayatik. O Allah, ij'alna, make us to be mimman istafaitahu. Among those you have appointed them liqurbika wa wilayatik in order for them to be near you and to go for your wilaya, to go for your, for your love in order for them to be closer to you. Wa akhlastahu liwuddika wa mahabbatik. Include us among those people. You have made them to have ikhlas in their hearts, and they decided to go for your mahabba in mawadda, to love you and to be, to be there closer for that com compassion which you give to them. This is the munajat of al muhibbi When we talk about the munajat, we come to learn that of course at the end there will be dua. And that dua is to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after you have shown that way of appreciating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Within the school of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam, we have many munajat, munajat al-shakirin, munajat al-muhibbin, and so on and so forth. These munajat are so important for us to recite them. And it is here I encourage you, dear brothers and sisters, 
Whenever you get time, please open these books of Munajat. Read them. Don't do only the way of dua which we do normally. We need to go beyond that. And what is that? We need, of course, to go for dua because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ud'uni astajib lakum. Ask me and I will answer you. Dua is very important. But we need to be elevated to the highest status also by doing munajat, by talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the way of whispering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believing that whatever we whisper to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he hears us and he will reply and of course he will make us to be better people insha'Allah ta'ala. Let us remember one another in our supplications and let us do the munajat because these ones will change us forever. وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته